Hello, it is Friday Flowers with Karen. How are you? Here we are, back in Friday Flowers. I have two vases. You can see just the tops of that, can't you? That might be perfect, I don't know. I've messed with this camera a few times now, so just bear with me. I do not have a camera person. This is just me and my phone. But I like to do this and talk about recovery while I do my flowers. As most of you know, I love flowers and I do them every week. And uh, I do probably too many of them, but I love them. I'm gonna use this vase first. I've got nice, cold, clean water in this square vase. And as many of you know, I love peonies, peonies, excuse me, peonies. And uh, here's my flower food. I'm gonna put one of these in here. And when peonies season left, hmm, I was kind of sad. I did a few bouquets, but now it's dahlia season and I love dahlias. And I found these dahlias at Trader Joe's, my favorite place. Aren't those a pretty color? And they're so autumn -y, so I think I'll use this while I talk to you. I've got a few other things. I'm just gonna kind of organically do this, okay? Um, so what I wanna talk about today is I really wanna talk about the doctor's opinion. What is the doctor's opinion? The doctor's opinion is uh, part of the book. It appears in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous right before chapter one, okay? It really is to me, well, I won't say, it. to me, okay, I'm gonna say it. To me, it really is the most important part of the book. A lot of people would say that the most important part of the book is the solution to alcoholism. But I will tell you what, if I didn't understand what the problem really was, I would not be able to do the solution. Like it just wouldn't make sense to me. Why? Because I'm alcoholic, right? I have alcoholism. So, ooh, there's little flies on here. Little, what are they called? Little, not flies. Gnats. There's gnats in my flowers. So the reason the doctor's opinion, the reason that I say that at all, that I, I need to know what's wrong with me, is because when I was 20, I think it was 24, I was 26. Yeah, I was 26 when I finally got sober. Finally, 26 is so young, isn't it? But, you know, I, I got sober. My life was upside down. I was a terrible blackout drinker at that age. And I was just a hot mess. I have a great story. I'll have to tell you my story sometime. But at 26, I decided that, oh my God, I was unemployable. I was just, it was horrible. So I decided to go to treatment and get sober. And when I went, I went to the best place, the best place at the time in the country. <coughs> there wasn't a zillion, excuse me. There wasn't a zillion of, these are kind of making me sneeze a little bit. There wasn't a zillion treatment centers at the time. And I ended up going to Betty Ford, the Betty Ford Center, which is how I ended up, if you've ever wondered how I ended up in Palm Springs from Spokane, Washington, that is how. These I really like. These are ranunculus, butterfly ranunculus. Look at those. Excuse me, I'm drinking my favorite thing, sparkling water. This one's called Soleil. I love that name. That's my daughter's name. And it's apple. And it is delicious, but it makes me burp. Um, sorry, I'm off track. Anyway, so I got sober and I went to Betty Ford Center. And the reason I chose Betty Ford Center was because um, I had heard about it on a TV show. At the time, no one was talking about treatment. No one was talking about recovery. I was from Spokane, Washington. I didn't know anybody that was in AA. I didn't know anything about it. And, uh, you know, I was adopted. Nobody in my, my birth, my, my adopted family drank. So I really knew nothing about this, except for I was a hot mess. And I'd heard on Murphy Brown was a show with Candace Bergen years ago fantastic show oh, i love that show um they don't make shows like that anymore they make good shows but not like that one 
Anyway, she was a recovering alcoholic on that show. And and one, I think just one episode, they talked about how she went to Betty Ford. I don't think they talked about it very much, but she went to Betty Ford. And I, I filed that away somewhere in my head. Don't know why. I guess I was amazed that someone quit drinking. And uh, so when it was time, I was living in the Caribbean at the time. Yes, the Caribbean where you could drink and do whatever you wanted and nobody said anything. Almost killed myself down there, drank myself to death. So I came back to the country and I could not get, I could not get sober, I was unemployable. And I thought, what about that place Murphy Brown went to? Actually, I thought about that place first when I was in the Caribbean, when one of my adventures had gone wrong. And, uh, and I thought, God, I should, I really need to get sober, right? Gerber daisies, love the color, so happy. Um, I'm sorry, they're not Gerber daisies, they're mums. Gerber daisies fall over too fast. Even though that last month that I did, I did a Friday flowers for you guys, and it didn't record, remember? But in that bunch, I posted a picture of it, and that bouquet, there were... Um, Gerber daisies, and they they lasted. I couldn't believe it. So I shouldn't give up the ghost on Gerber daisies. Anyway, I had checked into uh, a little bit of information. I called Betty Ford Center from the Caribbean and said, uh, you know, I don't know anything about this. They said, well, let us send you a package, a little packet on the whole program. And they did. And I got it in the Caribbean, and I didn't open it. By that time, I was well ready. I wasn't gonna need any help now. I had gotten better, meaning just got on with my bad self, drinking. And uh, so I hung on to that though. Some part of me knew someday I'm gonna need to go to treatment. And I went to treatment when I came back to the United States and I couldn't get sober. And I called Betty Ford and I checked in when I was 26. And when I went to Betty Ford, they got me sober. They, they got me off of I was a cocaine addict at the time and a drug addict, a uh, cocaine addict and an alcoholic, which I thought were separate. So when I went in and she said, there's some more dahlias. When I went in and she said, oh, so you're an alcoholic. I said, no, 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 I'm a cocaine addict. For some reason I thought that was better. <laughs> Sounded more classy, I guess. And she said, oh no, you're an alcoholic. You're just using the cocaine to, to not to black out. And she was right. But I really thought they were separate things, drugs and alcohol. And when I went into treatment, I met people that were drug addicts and then I met alcoholics. And I thought, well, I don't relate to the drug addicts, right? So I really thought it was about the substance you used, right? And how much you used and when you used it. If you drank in the morning, you were an alcoholic. Right, if you, let me turn this around a little bit so you can start seeing what I'm doing. I've got a little bit of a hole there, don't I? Um, so I just categorized it as I drink too much. That's what the problem is, I drink too much. And if I could just stop drinking, everything would be okay. Well, everything was okay for a while until I started thinking. Right? And I actually didn't start thinking for a long time. I stayed in meetings. I did what they told me. I went to aftercare. I got a sponsor. I did 90 meetings in 90 days. I became a part of the group and I stayed sober miraculously. But I really didn't know what was wrong with me. And then when I drank again at 14 years sober, um, it was shocking. I was like, oh my God, what happened, right? Everybody knew but me. I don't know if everybody knew. I don't think some people really understood anything about relapse at the time. I sure didn't, and I went to a lot of meetings. I was on a lot of panels. I did a lot of work, and I, don't, I, I just didn't understand what it truly meant to be alcoholic until I tried to get sober again. And I could not get sober. And I went back to my old group and they could not help me get sober. As I get these in here, I wanna move them around. All my flowers are falling off. 
So I was in a real conundrum because I could not get further again. And then my life, I thought my life was bad the first time. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Then everything I had gained in my first round of sobriety, which I should really call abstinence, because I didn't know what the fuck was wrong with me. Excuse my language. I didn't know what the world was wrong with me and how to fix it. Um, so I couldn't get, I couldn't get back. I couldn't get sober. And I destroyed not just this time my life, everybody else's too. That's the problem with this disease. It's a family disease. I don't have to tell you that if you're watching me. You must know. Um, so anyway, finally, after years wandering around drunk and broke and homeless, after losing everything I had built up and found in sobriety the first time, I found a group and this group was talking about what was in the big book, only what was in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. They didn't talk about their golf game. They didn't talk about anything, but the program of action required to stay sober. And I started with this group and I'll never forget it. This woman said to me, so what's the worst thing, worst decision you ever made? And I thought about it. She goes, I mean, really, what's the worst thing? You know, because I kept talking about how, how bad it was when I was drinking. What a bad drinker I was. And she said, well, what, what's the worst thing you've ever done? I said, it was to drink again. Hello? I had 14 years sobriety, or abstinence, I didn't know. Why would I ever drink again? Right? I, I ruined my entire life. I ruined my family's life. I ruined my finances, my retirement, my... Everything, a homeless, ridiculous, ugh, obnoxious. I was there, all of the shishes, right? So she said, oh, so were you drunk when you did that? And I said, no, I just told you. I thought she wasn't listening to me. I said, I just told you. I was sober for 14 years. She said, so you were sober for 14 years when you made the worst decision of your life. Yeah, I guess so. She says, so perhaps it's not the booze. Perhaps it's you. <gasps> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you talking about? You do not know who I am. <laughs> do you know who I am? Apparently not. Oh my God. I was so upset. I said, I don't get it, lady. What are you trying to tell me? She says, I think your thinking's the problem. I think your ego, the thinking that you know everything and you got it all down and it's everybody else's fault. I think that's the problem. I think you never did rely on a power greater than yourself. I think you thought you did, but you did not. And you drank again. You failed to enlarge your spiritual condition, is what she said. And I had to think about that, you know? The worst decision I made my whole entire life, I was stone cold sober. Boy, that blew me away, right? Even now, I gotta tell you what happened to me this morning. Was it this morning? It was this morning. I haven't told anybody this yet. You know, it's funny, because when things like this happen, you just brush them right out of your mind, like it didn't happen. La, 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 la. <laughs> but this happened. I have almost three years off of any nicotine. And uh, I'm pretty proud of that because it was very, very hard. Like most of you know, putting anything is very, very hard when you're an addict. And um, this morning I was putting something in the trash can of all places. I'm walking to the trash can with a bag of trash. And I thought, God, I would love, I chewed, chewed tobacco. I would love to have uh, some tobacco. I would, oh God, wouldn't that be great right now? I would just love it. God, my life is so stressful. I'm going through all this stuff. And then I thought, and usually when I think that, I think, oh, that's a terrible idea. But today it went further. Today, I said, you know, I could just quit again. 
it'd be a pain in the ass, but I could just quit again. I could just chew for a while, probably lose some weight again, right? All these great ideas. And uh, I could just quit all over again. And then I thought, oh my God, where did that thought come from? What the hell? It was the hardest thing to quit. It was so expensive. I mean, forget about my health. What about the cost? You know, if you smoke cigarettes, hello? Why would I ever start again? Insanity, pure insanity is what it was. Same thing with drinking. All of a sudden my mind started rearranging the scenario that it wasn't gonna be that bad. Um, you know, I, I could quit again. I could, I could just quit. I could just start over again and I could quit. See, that is alcoholic thinking. That is alcoholic thinking. That is sheer craziness. If you knew how hard it was for me to stop and how happy I am I don't drink. Where did that, and where did that come from? A little stress, a little something didn't go my way, a little something, something didn't happen the way I wanted and I'm ready to throw in the towel. <sighs> Couldn't believe it. So I just really like how this is turning out. I'm gonna have to, let me show you. You can't see the stuff hanging over the edge, but it's really quite pretty with those. So I need some more on this side hanging. I need a balance of hanging. So getting sober again, even this morning, I thought, God, your brain is out of control. And I told myself, you know, just shut the fuck up. You got terrible ideas. And I do have terrible ideas. The only, everything in my life, everything I have is because I have a higher power in my life. I've, I've got a program of recovery, of action that I can actually depend on instead of my thinking. Because my thinking comes up with some crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. So, same with drinking. So people, they come to me and say, I just need to stop drinking. If I could just get into a detox. Well, if you've ever been to treatment, you know what they do in treatment? They tell you to go to Alcoholics Anonymous, right? That's, the, that's really what it's there. They're there to get you to stop drinking and using. And then they point you in the direction of a 12-step program. Narcotics Anonymous, Gamblers Anonymous, whatever it is. Sex Anonymous. Oh, that's very pretty. One over here. Good, I've got one left. No, I've got two left. This one's bald, hello. Um, it'll still hang. So, this thinking is the problem. I, I posted the other day and I say it all the time. I came from my drinking and I stayed from my thinking. I have alcoholic thinking and they talk about that in the doctor's opinion. If I did not know this was a mental health issue and I thought it was about the drinking, I would quit drinking and then I would just go on my merry way and I would probably end up drinking again, right? Because I didn't treat the problem. A lot of people think that the booze is the problem. This is my soda water I'm using as a prop. <laughs> people think the booze is the problem. The booze is not the problem. My thinking is the problem. The booze is my solution to shut down my problem, right? This irritable, restless, discontent feeling. I've got to have treatment for that. And alcohol was my easiest way and it's most socially acceptable. Some people don't like that and they'll do heroin or meth and whatever else, prescription drugs, uh, you know, anything really. Some people are doing that kratom now they're doing uh, pot, wax. It's funny because you get an alcoholic who does pot. Pot smokers sm smoke pot. They they go out on the weekend out by their pool and they have a seat and they, they have the fire lit and they smoke a little pot and they put the joint down and they got the other half for tomorrow night, right? <laughs> Alcoholics will smoke pot and then they look for more pot and more pot and more pot. I'm not getting high enough. So I think I'm gonna use the wax, right? Now I'm gonna use wax in this because I need more of that. Ugh, it's exhausting. So if I would have known that it's a mental health issue by what they talk about, they talk about it in the book. This is not a shocker. That's why I'm so surprised that Alcoholics Anonymous has gotten so far away from what the real problem is and the real answer is and why you do it because now it makes sense to me. If I have a mental health issue, it makes sense that I have to go to meetings all the time or my own mind 
my own thinking will take back over and I won't even know it, right? So I have to be helping someone else because I can't see the alcoholism in myself, but I can see it in someone else and that will help keep me sober, right? But off on my own, all of a sudden I'm normal again. All of a sudden I'm okay, right? And you're the problem. <laughs> And, and pretty soon I'm resentful, I've got fear, I've got sex problems, and I am going to drink again. So the answer makes sense to me because I know what the problem is. And that's why I try to educate people on what the problem is. If you don't know what's wrong with you, it also is very important for the family to know what's wrong with you. Because if they understand the disease concept, they might not want to know first thing. And if they don't, they don't have to know. You have to know. But when a family knows, then they know that it's not about them. It's not their fault, right? It's not that you don't love them enough. It's that the thinking went crazy. And that's why people with even 20 years, if they quit enlarging their spiritual condition by self-sacrifice and helping others, they're probably gonna drink again. I don't care how much time you have. So then when you look at it like that and you understand what the problem is and you've got a solution for it, it is, it's not that difficult. It's not easy because your own ego tries to take back over. But the answer is pretty simple, right? And that's why I talk about it a lot. I just want people to know there is a way out. The answer is simple, simple, but not easy. Let's say simple, but not easy, right? A price has to be paid. It says in the book, the destruction of ego, right? An admission, I don't know everything and I might need some help is the first step in getting sober. So if you understand that, then you'll, it'll explain to all the relapses you've had, right? You'll have no, re if you don't come up with a better solution to your alcoholism, you're going to have to drink again. You'll just have to, you'll have to drink, use, gamble, sex, uh, shopping. You're going to do something, eat, cut, don't eat, right? Anything to try to treat this illness besides a spiritual answer. And if you just did what the program says and is outlined, you would not have so much problems here, right? It's not a mystery, not a puzzle, as I like to say. So thank you for listening. And I'm gonna shut this off now. I think I have to run around. I'm gonna take a picture and show you after the fact. I'll post it on stories tom uh, tomorrow, maybe tomorrow, but it's turned out pretty. Very fall, festive fun. All right. So, I love you guys. Have a great day.